again. It's good to be back. Um, I've got a dynamics problem for us today requested by some of my students. And what I've got here is an archery problem. A long time ago I used to shoot primitive archery, you know, wooden arrows, recurve bows, that sort of thing. And we shot at distances uh, in anywhere from 20 yards to 100 yards. Now, I'm sorry, I'm doing this in yards and feet. A yard is three feet. It's just a little less than a meter. Old English units are stupid units to use, but we still use them a little bit. So I am going to do the problem in English units. Um, one of the problems we had was to shoot uphill. We did this a lot, actually, in some of the contests. And so I made a problem like this. Let's say we're shooting from right here to right there. There's the target. Okay. And the distance, the horizontal distance, is 50 yards. That's 150 feet, so a little, le a little uh, less than 50 meters. And the vertical distance is 10 yards. It's 30 feet, a little less than 10 meters. Okay, I did some measurements on my bow and the, the not the muzzle velocity, but the velocity of the arrow when it came off the string was 165 feet a second. So I'll call that V naught. That's 165 feet a second. And there's some angle here, theta, that I would have to hold the bow at, you know, going up like that, in order to hit that target. So what, what would that angle be? So we're given all this stuff right here. Well, find theta. Okay, that seems pretty easy. Well, we're gonna, the way we're going to have to do this, we're actually going to have to figure out two things. We're going to have to figure out the time the arrow's in the air, and then we'll also figure out theta. So the solution to this works the same as the solution to a lot of these, these kinds of dynamics problems, any kind of ballistic problem, certainly. The arrow is, is very streamlined. The drag is very low. So we're going to assume for right now that the aerodynamics don't really matter much and that, that the force uh, opposing the motion of the, bow of the arrow, the force backwards on it, I guess, is very low uh, compared to its uh, uh, inertial force, MA, basically. Um, so the velocity doesn't change. So the big idea here, the big idea is that um, we're going to do this in, we're going to divide the x and y directions up, and we're going to solve for x and y motion separately. So we're going to divide x and y, and the other big idea, by the way, that's x and that's y, just to make sure we know what the directions are. Also, that's going to be the origin of my coordinate system right there. Okay, I can put it anywhere I want. It's easiest if I put it right there where the arrow is going to come off the bow. So um, I'm going to divide x and y up, and let's look at the accelerations, the, the forces acting on the arrow. Assuming aerodynamics doesn't matter, the only force acting on the arrow is gravity. That's down. There are no forces acting on it in the horizontal direction. So uh, v x is, is constant, not a g. Try that one more time there. dx is constant. That means a sub x equals 0. And the last big idea here is that a y is constant. Okay. The only acceleration is the acceleration due to gravity. That's downward, and that's constant. So this is going to make this, we can divide this up easily. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to say that the position in the x direction as a function of time is vx. The, that's the x component of velocity times time plus x0. Well, I've made that 0 since that's the origin of the coordinate system. That's why I did that, to make it easy. And y sub t is going to be 1 half g t squared plus v y t plus y zero. Now these two expressions are straight out of whatever dynamics book you're using. The, this is what you get when you have constant acceleration, and this is the one you get when you have constant velocity. I'll get my head out of your way here so you can see that. Okay? And again, this goes to zero since I put my origin right there at the release point. Okay, well what are Vx and Vy? Well, if I know that, let's see, that's theta and that's V0, that must be Vy and that must be Vx. Makes sense. And so if I've got a triangle, a right triangle, man, that sure looks like there ought to be some sines and cosines in there, and there are. I can say that Vy over, let's see, I can clean this up a little bit. 
dy over v0 equals sine theta. So dy equals v0 sine theta. And let's make sure I'm staying in frame here. I am, I'm good. Okay. And vx over v0 equals cosine theta. Okay, so vx over v0 is just cosine theta. And from there, I get vx equals v0 cosine theta. All right, so far so good. Now g, it's worth saying here, since I've decided y is positive up, g is going to be minus 32.2 feet per second squared. Okay, that minus is important. I've got to make sure gravity is pointed in the right direction. That minus is how I do that. All right, so let's see. I've got I know everything in there except t and uh, let's see. Well, there's going to be a theta in there too. Let's work this out. Let's see. I'm gonna, let's let's plug some stuff in here. When the arrow hits the ground, when the arrow or the target, I should say, impact. I'm going to say time at impact. Impact, and I'm going to call that capital T. All right. And so this is the distance at impact is 150 feet, and I'll call it maybe x final, and y final will be 30 feet. So let's put all that stuff in here. Uh, let's see, I'm going to erase some of this stuff. And I'm going to put the equation right there, and then I'm going to have to go over here and erase, and we'll do some more stuff. So I know that x final equals v0 cosine, oops, I'm going to do this, it's important I do this this way, v0 capital T cosine theta. Now the reason I put v0 t, put, put t in the middle there, is I want to make sure if I followed this exactly, I'd be putting the t after the cosine theta, and I want, don't want you thinking that the, the uh, cosine is operating on theta t. It's only on, operating on theta. So I rearranged that a little bit. And the other thing I know is that this is going to be minus g over 2 t squared plus v0 times t times sine theta, okay? So, look at those two equations right there. I got two equations, and there's only two things I don't know. I know that, I know that, I know that, I know it down there too, I know what g is. The only thing I don't know is I don't know theta and I don't know t. So to solve this, what that really means is find theta and t. Alright, so I'm going to I'm going to uh, erase this over here and I'll show you how to do that. There's a couple of ways to do it. One of the ways, unfortunately, is probably not algebraic. It's, uh, you can mess around with this for quite a while and maybe you can find enough uh, trig identities to make it work out where you can get theta equals something or t equals something. Um, I'm old, I'm not going to live that long. So here's what I decided to do. If I take this first equation and solve for t, okay, Let's, uh, let's maybe put some numbers in here first. Let's, let's, so a lot of us are happiest working with numbers. And uh, so that's 165 uh, t cosine theta. Again, I don't know t and theta. So what I can do is I can, if I work this out, this works out to be, oops, not 10 over 10, that's 10 over 11. T equals 10 over 11 cosine theta, and where I got that, it's 150 over 165 cosine theta. All right. If I take that expression and I plug that in wherever I see a T here, okay, I'm going to wind up with one equation and one unknown. So I'm going to get, let's see, that's going to be 30 equals minus 16.1, because 16.1 is half of 32.2, all right, times... Okay, 10 over 11 cosine theta squared plus 165. Now I'm going to cheat a little bit here. I'm going to use the unsimplified expression. I'm not really cheating. I'm going to switch gears here a little bit. 150 over 165 cosine theta. And the reason I did that is because the 165s will cancel out. And let's see, I probably need to put a sine theta there, right? Okay, that looks about right. So look at this. I've now got one equation and one unknown. One equation, the only thing I don't know is theta. Now I can simplify this a little bit. I can cross those out and I can do a few other things, but it isn't going to fundamentally get much simpler than this. Well, there's two things I can do here. I can simply 
uh, subtract uh, uh, 30 from both sides and just plot and see where the function goes to zero. Or I can plug this in, plug it into my calculator and have it solve it. Whatever I do, I probably want a zero on one side. So let's do one more thing here. This is a very minor simplification. Let's see, 10 over 11 cosine theta squared plus 150. Now that's going to be sine theta over cosine theta. You can make that tangent if you like. That's, that's still just fine. Okay, so there. I've got, that's about as simple as that's going to get. I can do two things. I can plug this right in here. Let's, let's just give this a name. Helps to give it a name. And I'll just, since I don't have any imagination this morning, I'm going to call that f sub theta. If I plot f sub theta versus theta and find out where that curve goes through zero, I'll find the value of theta that makes this equation true, and that's the solution. Or I can plug f of theta into my calculator and say, tell me the roots. Okay? The root of an equation is, is just the value of the, uh, the variable, in this case theta, that makes the equation equal to zero. So it's kind of the same thing. And the last thing I want to do here is tell you what the answer is, so you can work it out for yourself and know whether you got it right or not. There's actually two thetas. Theta 1 is 0 0.288 radians, and that's 16.5 degrees. And theta 2 equals, to make sure I get this right, um, 1.48 radians, and that equals 84.8, I think. Okay? And that means there's actually two values that'll do it. I can go below 45 degrees and take a very low shot, or I can go almost straight up and come back down again. Either way will do it. Now, as an archer, I wasn't about to shoot an arrow way up high because you can't see it anymore and you don't necessarily know where it's going to come down. Real dangerous, real scary. I would have taken that shot any day. All right? So there you go. This is, we're shooting uphill. We're solving some basic equations of the described the ballistic flight of arrows. And the big idea is we broke up x and y into separate solutions. Came up with that, solved it numerically. That's the answer. Hope this helps, and I hope to see you next time.